All right, we'll call the meeting back to order then. We are using, uh, welcome everybody out there to the council meeting on February the 2nd. Uh, great news uh, this morning from Wireton that uh, Willie says will uh, just have, uh, spring will be shortly coming, it will be a month and a half uh, before we see spring. The uh, Poxitani Phil and our other friend in, uh, on the East Coast have both said that we will have six long weeks of winter before uh, spring gets here. So Wyatt and Willie give us the good news of just a month and a half before spring gets here. So early spring from Willie. Uh, as I said, we're using a bit of a different uh, communication system today. Uh, to see how that works out and we'll uh, make, a, make a decision on uh, which is best going forward. I do have uh, a motion moved by Carol Lawrence and seconded by John Lee Bell. Uh, be it resolved that the Council of the Municipality of West Bay hereby returns to open session of Council at 10.12 a.m. Is there any comments on the motion? Then I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. And Mark. Matters arising from closed session. Uh, this morning I do have uh, one thing. Just let the minutes know that there's uh, the two points that we went into closed session were the only points that were discussed. <coughs> And coming out of closed session, I have a motion moved by John A. Bell and seconded by Rob Thompson. Be it resolved that the Council of the Municipality of West Bay hereby confirms the direction taken in camera respecting, sorry, respecting the Salgeen Valley Conservation Authority. If, uh, any comments on that? We'll call the question then. All those in favor? Any opposed? That's carried. Okay. Uh, public meetings. Uh, we have one scheduled for today. Uh, consent agenda. I have a motion moved by Don B. Marshall and seconded by Doug Hutchison. Be it resolved that items A1 to C C1 inclusive contain a part one consent agenda be adopted and further that authorization be given for the actions to be taken as may be necessary to give effect to the recommendations contained therein. Any questions on the consent? Call the question and all those in favor? Any opposed? That is carried. And those motions to give effect there. Uh, we That will bring us down to communications from Mayor and Council. Are there any councillors that have the communications? Councillor Lawrence, Carol? Um, I should have recorded this at the last one. I'm sorry, I neglected to. Um, I attended the 25th anniversary of Rethreads on the 17th of uh, January. And uh, I had been invited and asked to speak to them. And I did also bring uh, congratulations and um, greetings from yourself and Council and uh, over the 25 years, uh, they have very successfully, and I say with untold numbers of volunteers from their store, they've raised 235,000 over the 25 years, which in turn brings up to their cause and other uh, you know, charities and maternity homes and that sort of thing. Um, so they've done very well, and uh, they continue to do so and continue to do it with volunteers. It's quite amazing. Mm -hmm. I know they do a tremendous job down there, and uh, some of that, some of the clothes, the clothing that they would have without that would have ended up in our landfill probably. So we should ask Ken to uh, be getting numbers from them on a continuous basis for our diversion rates. Yes, exactly. Uh, as well, too. And what they don't uh, sell or what's in there for a long time, they goes to kitchen at Goodwill. So mm -hmm. it's certainly. Yeah. Okay, thank you for doing that. I'll say thank you to uh, any of the other council members that 
Uh, in my schedule, I wasn't able to get to a couple of things, but I did get to, uh, on Saturday, represent the municipality at the uh, Alzheimer's Walk uh, for the Green Bruce Alzheimer's Society. Um, the walk was, uh, there was one in Hanover, one in Old Sound, one in Port Elgin, I believe, and another one in King Carden. They had four this year. Um, was the numbers of walkers were down, but the uh, amount of uh, financial uh, input was uh, above what they've had for the last couple of years. They raised over ten thousand uh, dollars in Hanover. I haven't heard the overall Gray Bruce numbers, but it's changing. They've had Gray Bruce has run uh, or had these walks for uh, I think ten or twelve years now, uh, but they are going uh, on a a national basis, so they're hopeful that sometime uh, that they'll have it in June uh, this year, that they'll have a national walk uh, for Alzheimer's dementia. Uh, it'll be changing instead of uh, being a local units, we'll be doing a national one. So look forward to some more uh, issues on that. And I would be remiss to say uh, that uh, a team that I've cheered for uh, the New England Patriots. Uh, I hope everybody celebrated grand last night uh, in their wonderful victory in the Super Bowl. I uh, appreciate all that support. Right, Mark? Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, delegations this morning, if there's no other responses. Sorry. Sorry. Um, yeah, we had uh, the Parks first open community meeting uh, yesterday, uh, Saturday in uh, Aiton from 2 to 4. Uh, I left at 3.30 um, because my father wasn't well, so I wanted to go and visit him. But um, as of that point, there had not been anybody in to do the survey. Uh, so hopefully the word gets out again because the next one is fe uh, February 7th. Uh, which is this Saturday at the Elmwood Fire Hall from 2 to 4. Um, we're hoping that there'll be uh, a few more people as it maybe gets better known. Um, so we, we waited there, and uh, I'm not sure if anybody came in after that, but there certainly was no response. It's unfortunate, but the surveys are here to be filled out, and they are online at the West Guard website, so they can be filled out that way as well. And uh, also in the libraries, there's a bit the surveys are available. And I just wanted to mention that um, this Saturday between 2.30 and 4.30, it is my father's 90th birthday with a come and go tea. And I just, anybody who would like to come is more than, uh, we'd, we'd love to have them. And it's uh, at Sprucewood in the recreation room downstairs. Very good, congratulations uh, to your dad. And is there any update on the uh, Valentine's, uh, the February market that yes. opened on Friday. Yes, it was. I apologize for not being able to get down there, but hope to get there. If not, at least on the 13th, with the last day, I noticed they advertise that. That's when they want the gentleman to come. Well, yes, because we always know men leave shopping to the last minute, so we'll even wrap it for you down there. <laughs> so uh, the market was, uh, it opened, and there's a number of vendors. There were several that were not able to attend because they had the flu, which was unfortunate. Um, but they will be there at the next market. Uh, so we didn't have as many vendors as was paid for, but um, but they will be there, like I said. Uh, the market, I thought, was quite well attended. Um, the vendors seemed to be happy, so for the first one, for again, for February. So hopefully it will continue and build as it gets closer to Valentine's Day. Okay, great. Uh, this coming Friday as well as February the 13th? Yes, yeah, 6 and the 13th are the next two, yes, from 4 till 9. Very good. Okay, there's nothing else. Uh, then we'll move on. Uh, delegations. We were to have a delegation uh, this morning uh, dealing with uh, snow removal uh, issues, I believe, from the individuals. I don't know whether there's any karma in this or not, but 
but she's stuck in the snow and uh, will not be able to attend today. Just got a uh, message a few minutes ago that uh, she's had to cancel because of transportation issues and the depth of the snow that's there. So we'll look forward to rescheduling uh, this uh, Mauser in the future. Is there any business arising from the previous minutes? The previous meeting? I'm not aware of any. Uh, staff reports. That will put us uh, ahead of time, Carrie. So we have the director of finance, uh, Carrie's report. Come out in the package. Uh, in that, in Carrie's report, is the uh, financial statements, the accounts. Sorry, before we get to that, we better do this. Oh, no, that's on the consent agenda. It is on yours. The financials and the account vouchers there. Is there any questions of Carrie on the accounts? Carrie? I do have a just a correction on page 14 of the voucher 26, um, the West Ontario Power. Um, it's for the Newstead Arena, but it was at, incorrectly coded to the Northview Arena, so we'll have that fixed up. But. That was just a correction. The amount stays the same. It's just same. the uh, facility that it was allocated to in air. Okay. <coughs> so, Councillor Hutchison. Uh, page uh, two. Just a question about the Saugie Valley Conservation Authority. The costs involved there. Is that, is that normal flood control expense amounts there? Um, that's recorded. Oh, that's yes. The uh, the dam maintenance, yeah. Those are typically in line with what we see. Uh, it's usually twenty to thirty, depending on any uh, issues that they've had with um, frazzles and that. But that's uh, a typical uh, amount of what we see for maintenance for there. So is that is that uh, can you can respond? Is that uh, where they actually have high volume to get frazzles at point? Or? No. Conservation Authority has been contracted. They've done that for uh, 20 years or more. I was going to say it was the old term days. 97 was the flood. We did it in 98. We did it ourselves after that. I think until I'm outpatient because there's a rough day. They also have the contract. The, the mill dam is a provincial is still with the, with the province. So the province has since we were doing one and the other two, so it's been uh, left with the conservation to monitor three of those, all three of those dams. And uh, if there's any maintenance and whatnot, we are, by owners, we end up with the responsibility of updating their capital improvements on whatever it is. Okay. Any other questions on the vouchers? Doug? Um, page, uh, page three again, I guess. Um, you know, it must be page two. Page three, anyways. Um, the bridge culvert inspections So is that is that an uh, ongoing cost that we require there? Were they, or was that just a one-time thing? Was it eighteen thousand for bridge and culvert inspections? Yeah, it's uh, okay. we're we're uh, regulated to inspect all the bridges in West Gray uh, biannual, and they were inspected in two thousand fourteen by WSP. So from that cost, from that inspection, then they would tell us if the bridge needs to be closed or repaired or whatever. Yes. That's right. Okay. For their <coughs> professional opinion, what recommended weight all of them? They do a pretty extensive uh, job on it. Did they, did they, sorry, did they give us um, a, a life um, or like a 
projected life expectation for that bridge that when they do that? No, not so much, but the recommended repairs and that type of thing are, as Mayor Eccles has said, the load of the bill last year, reduce it or whatever. But right, we have to do something for life span. I don't think those projections. <clears throat> okay, anything else? Seeing none, then I have a motion moved by Rob Thompson and seconded by <coughs> Hutchison. It resolved that the Director of Finance Treasurer be authorized to pay the accounts presented as voucher number 26, 2014, in the West Grade, in the amount of $206,869.84, and presented as voucher number 2, 2015, in the West Grade, in the amount of $329,674.84. Do you want that as amended? Because we were changing that. It doesn't change the dollar amount, it's just the okay. GL yeah. account that it hits, yeah. so I think it's fine. It's still approving the total mark. Let me make note of that in the minutes that it was changed from Normandy to Newstead, where the where, which arena it actually was on. Okay. Any questions on the motion? Call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Okay, Carrie, the next one is on our 2015 insurance renewal. And we had uh, quite a conversation with this uh, at Committee of the Whole Budget uh, the other day. So there is a recommendation there. And I have a motion. And I'll introduce the motion, and if there's any more discussion, we have it after being reduced. I have a motion moved by Don B. Marshall and seconded by Carol Lawrence. Be it resolved that the Council of Municipality of West Grade hereby approves increasing the liability deductible to $25,000 for the renewal of the municipal insurance for the period of January 1st, 2015 to December 31st, 2015 with Jardine Lloyd Thompson, Canada, Inc. And further that $50,000 be transferred to the insurance reserve uh, in insurance reserve in the 2015 budget. Is there any other questions, comments on this? I guess if I could, our previous deductible was $5,000. Uh, and with that, Gary, we were looking at a 90% increase because of the number of slip and fall incidents that have happened one of our larger urban centers, it seems to become almost epidemic uh, for individuals uh, going there. So there was an increase uh, in the insurance because of the number of uh, claims that were submitted, not settled, but uh, going forward with those claims that were out there. So uh, it comes to effect uh, every time somebody puts in a claim. It's not what the numbers are on the settlement, but if you file, the municipality is going to uh, have to pay no different than your car insurance or anything else. So it will be on all individuals out there to be a little more careful. Uh, we do an excellent job of cleaning and avoiding those things, but uh, we're held responsible for all. Done. I think this, as you're saying, I think this is one issue that should be really put out there to the public somehow, either through the media or through our literature. And it's about a two percent increase in taxes, and, and that could be low enough if we get as many claims as we've gotten in the past. And so we should let the public know why their taxes are going up because of the rise of insurance and things we've got coming in. Well, this adjustment in our deductible and whatnot will keep us to a 2%. Had we gone with what it was carried, I think we were almost at 45 to 5%. So this puts a lot more onus, as I said, at the 25000 on deductible from the municipality. 
got uh, Deputy Mayor Bell and then Councilor Lawrence. John? Yes, I'm glad and conferring with Councilor Marshall has said, Mr. Mayor, and I think everybody's well aware here that there's no two ways to put this. There are some bogus claims out there. <clears throat> they're bogus. And they're, they're phony. And uh, going forward with this idea that the municipality is going to be more vigilant on that, yes, we may have got away kind of lucky with just a 2%. As you said, it could have been 5%. And everybody's going to have to pay for that increase, and that's very unfortunate because I definitely think we're getting taken advantage of. Councilor Lawrence, Carol. Thanks. I just wanted to put it into dollar terms that and people should be aware because of the number of claims, uh, as you say, unsettled on slip and fall, our premium increased uh, over a quarter of a million dollars over yeah. the premiums that we had. And to continue with the same. Uh, 5,000 deductible, there would have been an increase of uh, 274,000. As it is, cutting it to a 25,000 deductible, which is pretty high deductible, we're now at 110,000 premium increase. Not a premium, but premium increase. So it's still high due to those seven full claims. So we do have to, uh, I think we're doing our due diligence on <coughs> the educated public and what this is costing them. Yes. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion on the motion? And I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. adjustment uh, it's done in a, on an annual basis we'll look at that and the conservation to when I said conservation municipality the committee of <coughs> on budget had uh, discussed this and made a recommendation that uh, for 2015 be a 1.5% to the uh, grid adjustment to uh, cover inflation I have a motion moved by Doug Hutchison and seconded by John A. Bell. Be it resolved that the Council of Municipality of West Grade hereby approves a 1.5% adjustment to the staff remuneration grid and council remuneration effective January 1st, 2015, as recommended by Committee of the Whole. Is there any conversation, questions on the motion? Seeing none, then I'll ask the question and call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That's carried. Okay. The next one, Carrie. You had a, uh, we have a letter from the Elma Fire Department Joint Board of Management. asking for, because it's a joint board, and it has to come before both councils for approval. It's here. Is there any conversation, questions, comments on the letter? Or we'll see it through. Councillor Thompson. Okay. As of uh, last week's budget meeting, I was asked to uh, do a follow-up in regards to the air compressor. I spoke with the chief uh, the following day. Just to bring everybody to speed, uh, the information we had was they had uh, from uh, 60 minute tanks. In fact, uh, they do have, they have uh, six 30 minute bottles, 19 45 minute bottles, four 60 minute bottles um, with 45 PSI, 4,500 PSI bottles. Uh, these 45, these six bottles of 4,500 are cascading bottles. There's four in the hall and two on the rescue. Um, they are, <coughs> used to refill the smaller bottles when required and uh, said they have two on the rescue unit. Uh, he also writes that the uh, compressor is capable of filling the 4,500 bottles and accommodates the size that can be filled in Durham. The casting bottles on the rescue can be filled uh, by them as well if they have the connections. So there's not an issue there of refilling the casting bottles, which are the 60-minute bottles. Uh, however, feels that it takes his rescue out of service 
and it carries the firefighter's gear. And uh, then he goes on to say he doesn't know how you can transport the Cascade bottles, but the Cascade bottles are already being transported. Checking with the Deputy Fire Chief in West Gray, uh, Newstead and Aiton have the same system. The Fire Chief goes to Aiton, picks up the bottles there and brings them over and fills them. And Newstead has them on the rescue vehicle and they transport them to their, through the rescue vehicle. And it was also the request that uh, was asked to follow up on. Uh, so the issues with the air compressor. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just past that as well. Um, the air compressor was originally, uh, we asked if it could be set off for a year. However, we do have um, about $25,000 in reserve and uh, from the end of the year that was not used in 2014. And so we added it back in to this year's capital budget about taking $25,000 from reserve. So it's only really a $15,000 um, <clears throat> hit to the capital budget for this year. So the capital budget that is uh, initially, it said 80,000 or something on that. Yeah, so 25000 will be directly taken out of reserve. So it takes it back down to a regular capital budget for normal years. So uh, the chief over there was not happy about uh, transporting all the bottles, etc. He just, and I'm not sure, he did not want to transfer them to the Walkerton station because he said that depletes the year's usage of their own, or of their own, um, Compression system, and so he was not prepared to do that. So, I and and that compression system that is in Elmwood is not um, repairable, and it will not pass inspection at this point. It's 25 years old. The op I was just oh, gonna, I was just going to say the operating budget is uh, I believe one thousand dollars over what it was for the 2014. So we managed to get that right down to. Um, almost a nil increase, 0.5 or something percent. <coughs> right. Any further comments? Questions on that? Deputy Mayor Bell. This is a uh, this is a forty thousand dollar piece of equipment, isn't it? Yes. But twenty-five thousand out of reserve. Right. Okay. And I mean, the reserve. Whether you take it out or whether you leave it in, it's it could be used for something else. I guess is what I'm thinking. But these bottles could be filled either in Walkerton, Chesley, Hanover, or Durham. Well, Walkerton, no. He has said no. He well, he said it. no. He said no. But I guess it would be in the joint it could, board. It could, it could be. It would have to be approved by the Walkerton Council, and he said they won't because their compression system system in Walkerton is older and to use it again for more bottles I doubt they will because they don't have any money to replace theirs either. It was his. So, all right, so if there is, they don't have any money to use theirs, so were they going to bring them from Walkerton to film to fill them? <laughs> well, no, because their compression system is still working yeah. and has another, has more lifespan, I suppose, in it, but he's not prepared to bless in the lifespan. Yeah, yeah, and I appreciate that, but I guess that argument can be made for any piece of equipment. Unless you use it, it's not going to wear it. doesn't matter if it's your car, it doesn't matter what it is. But so I'm not just sure if I buy all that. But the problem, I guess the biggest problem I have is $40,000 piece of equipment that goes to a fire department that does about 20 some calls, or 34 last year, sorry, thank you. Average 30. So, it's awful expensive, as, as my whole point of view. That was, somewhere along the road, I just kind of thought that that spirit of cooperation could be done a little bit more. And Councillor Thompson said that it could be filled in Durham. Now, whether we can arrange that or not, I don't know. And whether that's thinking outside the box, I don't know. But for 40000 bucks, I think it maybe needs a little more, shall we say, uh, input put into the thought process. Well, we did have quite a conversation, and that this is the uh this is 
what I feel as chair and what the board felt was a viable solution to the to the problem there of a 25, 30 year old compression system that is not going to work um, and can't be repaired. Mr. Thompson, I just wanted to add to that. Uh, the deputy chief in West Grade didn't state that uh, they feel for West Grade it's a good deal that they have the uh, cascading tanks in their new step and eight uh, fire balls. It's a better system uh, to have one generator, yeah, one air compressor and run it that way. I'm just wondering what kind of what kind of arrangements or what kind of a deal we can make with the West Grade fire uh, for transporting and uh, building the tanks. <coughs> That already in eight and used it. Why don't we do the same for Elmwood? Is um, Durham prepared to do that? Fill their bottles? Plus, the fire chief isn't back as yet, so I'm, I'm well, staying, we, supposed to yeah. be back this week. So, as I said, just as requested, I've been following up on some information. Right, so we don't know whether that's a, yeah, that's you saying. know, whether that's a, even a viable solution. For at this point, no, yeah. at this point. And how they get transported in somebody's vehicle, et cetera, et cetera, is another thing. Well, the fire chief has those actual boxes that the bottles fit right in, so they're secured. It's just like a propane tank to sit right in, and he transports. It's just a matter of setting up uh, an agreement with him, I suppose. I mean, Newstead tra transports in their rescue vehicle. I don't know why the fire chief for Brockton and Elwood doesn't want to transport his rescue vehicle. He <coughs> takes the vehicle out of service, but. It's the same thing it takes the vehicle out of service in Houston also too. So it seems to be working fine for West Ray and just uh, I don't know, like collaborations there. Well if I could, look there's three stations in West Ray and we have one pump that one fills compressor. fills compressor that fills for everybody for that looks after three stations. Um, Brockton has one station and has a pump. Elmwood thinks that they have one station and they need a bomb. Uh, you know, it's forty thousand dollars. How many pumps do you need out there? Or where do we get into partnership philosophy around understand they need trucks and you know where can we partner on some of this high capital input equipment? That is there. Maybe if Brockton uh, is the one in West Korea, I believe we, we purchased it for the three stations about four or five years ago, six years ago, maybe. And it's worked uh, very good to operate for three stations instead of having a forty thousand piece dollar piece of equipment in all three stations. We've got a down we have one in one station look after three and if the Brockton one is at the point now where they're worried about it maybe they could uh, it's a little bit further for for Brockton and Walker and station to come to Durham than it would be Newstead but it's very minimal difference Maybe we could uh, put a program together to fill Brockton's as well, too. And Elmwood's. Okay. The budget and the numbers that are in the numbers here, there was $111,000 in actual capital. That's what was requested originally, $111,040 <clears throat> originally. So you're saying we've pared that down to 85? With 25 coming out of reserve, yes. So is that 85 with 20 coming out of 25 out of reserve? Or is that 110 with No, it's 85 down? with 25 coming out. So the 25 wasn't proposed in that first 111,000? What was removed was the thermal imaging camera for 12,640 and a backup generator of 11,000 was removed out of it from. That was shown there, 
I think the backup is still in there, and the station air compressor went from 45 to 40,000. I think the generator's down to 3,000. Oh, yeah, yeah, the generator would draw. <laughs> That's right. And the image and camera was taken out all together. A number of other stations have that. Councillor Hutchison. Mr. Mayor, just um, given that we have three uh, units or three stations, I think any opportunity we have of sharing resources, sharing costs, and whatnot, that we should look at that. Um, um, and I also think if it comes down to emergency, we still have. Uh, in the Allen area, we have the Chesley and uh, Hanwood Fire Department, do we not? So it's, if there was really an emergency situation where you needed to get bottles filled, yeah, that, that's another option. But um, I think it's, I think given that we have the three, that we need to look at cost sharing as much as we can and uh, keep our budget in line. So are you suggesting, Mr. Hutchison, that we send this back and see whether there would be an opportunity to do that and ask it for it to come back in another uh, in a future council meeting yes or defer for a year and and, uh, and uh, try to make an agreement but that works uh, with us with the uh, Durham and Aiden's fire station we can't defer for a year um, what we could do is wait for Phil to come back and see if there is a possibility of him, um, you know, agreeing to some sort of um, monetary agreement to fill these bottles for Elmwood. Um, that's, about, that's about where we have to go with this. Okay. Rob? Good. Uh, keep them. No, yeah, yeah, that that system's working. not working. Yeah. We used to. I wonder if, it, on top of that, maybe we could look at whether Head over Chesty would be willing to join in there too, uh, in regards to costing and so on. If uh, West Bay is. I think it would be very wise to look at all of those options. <coughs> um, there's certainly collaboration when it comes to larger pieces of equipment. There's a large aerial truck in Hanover, and it's, you know, that's where it is. Not, a, not every fire station needs a, an aerial truck. We certainly had that, and I think they work together on, if you have the aerial truck, uh, Hanover doesn't have a bumper, or sorry, a tanker. tanker. tanker yeah. Thank you, Larry. They have no tankers, but uh, a lot of us around do. And there certainly has been times where Hanover's needed tankers, uh, sort of in their service area, of, uh, like Roslyn, that uh, we've supplied that. You know. So we have them. They have the very large aerial. We still have an aerial in Durham, but that partnership uh, is going good. Maybe we need to expand that, as Councillor Hutchison has said. So. Well, we haven't. You haven't introduced. We yet. haven't introduced okay. the motion. Uh, we just have a question okay. to give direction to the fur. Uh, mm. The except for uh, introducing that, uh, have staff uh, continue to look at chances uh, and opportunities to partner with some of our other forces out there. Okay. All right. Rob, or, sorry. Rob, uh, John. Yeah, and uh, yes, yeah, so if we could hold off on this item, I think Mr. Mayor, uh, Councillor Thompson has said that he would be uh, willing to get some more information from some of these other departments in the sky and the fire chief. So if he's willing to do that, I think that uh, the information could be forthcoming, could be done. <coughs> Your, uh, 26th of February. I was going to say, yeah, when's the next? 26th of February is the next 13th. Elmwood. 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 I was looking for the Elmwood Fire. 16th. Yeah. So that would still work well within their budgetary process if we could uh, address it. 
I'm not sure where the Brockton side is on it at this point in time, whether they accepted it. But I imagine they would take the opportunity if we could find a partnership and uh, uh, get better function out of the resources that we have there. Okay? So you've got that, Mark? All right. Proceedings of the February 2nd, 2015 Council meeting be now read a first, second, and third time. Passed and numbered, and that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the CEO, the deputy clerk, sealed with the seal of the corporation, and be engrossed in the bylaw book. And you will notice that this one is for February 2nd. I think in our agenda it said January the 19th. May the bylaw be correct. I think it was a cut and paste one. Said it's a position that we're taking to confirm all the actions by bylaw. The nuances from the municipal act. Any questions or comments on the motion? Call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That's carried. Okay. Uh, new business. Larry. Your Worship, I have four heads. There's one resolution stemming under business from previous meetings. Um, we want, wish to pass a resolution reconfirming the appointment of Councillor Cutting uh, and having Councillor uh, Lawrence as the, uh, the sub for the uh, Municipal Liaison Committee uh, with East Durham Wind. Uh, and it was felt rather than put a bylaw through, uh, just to do it by resolution and a confirming bylaw we didn't confirm it as it done by re by uh, by bylaw so if we could pass a resolution just reconfirming the appointment of councillor cutting uh with councillor Lawrence as the uh uh as the sub appointment uh, it would be appreciated i apologize that's my thing uh, yeah is there i guess the urgency for that is there a liaison committee meeting the agenda of sir. So I guess maybe we'll, what we could do is just say we'll prepare it for the next meeting and, and introduce it that way. Fine, Your Worship, but it was business from the previous meeting. I just I missed it. Yeah. I apologize for that, but I want to make sure it was brought up. So. Okay. Thank you. Larry, and yeah, 
I think that will work it in that yeah. fair enough sources that we don't have to do it as a amendment. An addendum or notice of motion? Or an addendum? Is there any notice of motion? Direct motions this morning? Seeing none. Closed session. I don't believe we have anything else in closed session. Question period. At this point, we offer uh, anybody in the audience to ask a question on the agenda of the slow wish. Seeing none. Very good. As municipal act notices, I don't believe we have any mark. Adjournment. We're down to that. I will not. Moved by <laughs> Councillor Barnes. Carol moves that we adjourn. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> what would you do? <laughs> Obviously, we give you one <coughs> to do, Councillor Cutting, and you have already Dave Molson left, and you know, so early you have. Things fly out the door. Thank you, Carol. I'll accept Mr. Carol's Mr. motion to adjourn. We'll stand adjourned. I'm thinking that's what you're 10.55.